Okay, this is the review for chapter four. I'm going to start with FNet problems. Uh, in this first FNet problem, it's going to be an elevator problem. Let's say that I have an office building, a nice tall office building, and I'm going to look at different parts of a trip while somebody's in an elevator. In part A, down here, the person is going to enter the eleva elevator on the first floor and then they are going to start a trip that's going to take them to the top floor. On part B we're going to be midway through the trip and on part C we're going to get up to the top where we're going to have to slow down so that we can uh, go to a velocity of zero. The defining things for this problem are going to be the accelerations. And so down here, I'm going to say the acceleration of the elevator, I'm making this number up, is going to be positive 2 meters per second squared. For part B, the acceleration is going to be 0. And for part C, the acceleration is going to be negative 1.5 meters per second squared. Again, I made up all of those numbers. For any part that we look at, we're going to have a free body diagram that would look something like this. I am going to make up another number. I'm going to say that the individual has a mass of 100 kilograms to make life easy mathematically. I'll draw a free body diagram. I'll identify that there's an FG going down that's going to be countered by an FN going up. Those things are not required to be equal to each other, although they will be equal if there's no acceleration. If we do have acceleration, like in part A, then we're going to have to calculate what the Fn will be. That's going to be my strategy for this problem. I want us to calculate the Fn for all three scenarios, part A, B, and C. And I can also tell you that that's the same thing as saying the apparent weight of this individual inside of the elevator. Or if they were standing on a scale, this would be the reading that the scale is going to give us. First things first, I'm going to need to know the weight of the person, the FG. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. FG is always equal to MG, and in this case, FG is equal to 100 kilograms times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's going to be an FG value of negative 980 newtons. That's a good number for me to have off to the side. So first, let's look at part A, where I have an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. Remember, if you have the acceleration, you should go ahead and start with Newton's second law. F net is equal to mass times acceleration. This is the acceleration of the individual inside of the elevator. So F net is going to be equal to 100 kilogram mass multiplied by the 2 meters per second squared. F net is equal to positive 200 newtons. Now, once I have that information, I can switch over to my other equation that says F net is the sum of forces. So F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus so on. And in this particular case, my forces are completely defined by the Fn plus the Fg. And I will say that 200 newtons that I found from the previous equation is equal to the Fn that I don't yet know. It needs to be an N. Uh, minus 980 newtons. If I do my arithmetic, I can find that Fn is equal to 100, or I'm sorry, 1180 newtons. That is my answer for part A. Now for part B where the acceleration is equal to zero. Many of you will prefer to just look at this and say if acceleration is zero, F net is zero. And then I can say in this case that the FG is equal to the FN. I can still show this mathematically and I'm going to do that really quickly just so we can see how that works. I start with Newton's second law. This is no different than part A and that I am given the acceleration. It's just that it happens to be zero. So that term goes to zero, which means the F net goes to zero. Then, from that point, I switch over to my other equation that says F net is the sum of forces, which is Fn plus Fg. And I find 0, because I just solved for that, is equal to Fn plus Fg. And I find that 0 is equal to Fn minus 980 newtons. And if I do that arithmetic, I, of course, 
find that Fn is equal to positive 980 newtons. That is my answer for part B. Lastly, let's look at part C where the acceleration is negative 1.5. Remember, this is a negative acceleration, but I have a positive velocity. So I can say that my velocity vector was up, but my acceleration vector is down. That's a slowing. And if we just go back really quickly to part A, I can say that in this case, the velocity was starting to go up, but my acceleration vector was also up. So that was an increase in speed. And in the middle, I had a constant velocity that was unchanged because of the acceleration equal to zero. All right, for this problem, we start in the same way that we have before. F net is equal to mass times acceleration. That means that my F net is going to be equal to 100 kilograms multiplied by negative 1.5 meters per second squared. From there, I find that F net is equal to negative 150 newtons. Switching over into a different equation, I say F net is the sum of forces, which is Fn plus Fg. And negative 150 newtons is equal to Fn that I'm solving for minus 980 newtons. Add 980 to both sides, and you will find that Fn is equal to that would be 830 newtons, positive. Let's look at a variation of the same problem. I'm going to put my surface out. I'm going to have the same 10 kilogram box. It's still going to be moving to the right, except this time I'm pulling on the rope. So this is a rope here that I'm drawing in. I'm pulling on a rope in order to make the box move. I still have friction that I have to fight against, and that friction is going to be the same. We said before, that the friction force was going to be equal to 20 newtons. This time, I'm going to give us the information that the maximum tension that this rope can withstand is going to be equal to 45 newtons. Anything beyond that is going to snap this rope. And the question is going to be, what is the maximum acceleration? All right, in max, what's the maximum acceleration that I can actually give to this box before that rope would snap? If I come up and look at what my free body diagram is going to look like, again, I still have that FG going down. I have an FN going up that's going to counter some of that uh, weight, in fact, all of the weight. Over on this side, I have a tension that's going to be pulling this way, and I could call that an FT. If I wasn't real clear what I wanted to call that, remember, you can always go back to just calling it an applied force. I'm going to go ahead and put in the information for our max. I'm going to say that the max tension is going to be 45 newtons. Now remember, friction always opposes motion or the direction of intended motion. And so my friction still is leftward pointing. You'll notice it was leftward pointing before. It doesn't really matter what side of the box I draw the vector on as long as I maintain the direction of the vector. So my friction force over here is 20 although I'm going to be careful to put in negative 20 when I plug that into an equation. So in this case, I'm being asked to solve for the acceleration. I'm going to go ahead and start by doing my sum of the forces. F net is going to be equal to my tension plus my friction. I'm not going to include the Fg or the Fn in this problem because those are not in the direction of motion. The vertical is not going to influence the horizontal. So really, I'm summing the forces in the horizontal. I'm going to find that the net force is equal to the tension was 45 newtons minus, because of the direction, 20 newtons for the friction. That means that the F net is equal to 25 newtons. It's as good as I'll be able to do with this rope. Then I have to switch over to Newton's second law and say F net is equal to mass times acceleration. 25 newtons is going to be equal to my 10 kilogram box times the acceleration, and I can pretty simply figure out that the acceleration is going to be 2.5 meters per second squared. That's the max that I could do. Anything beyond that would be too much and it would break the rope. We'll do one more problem. Let's say that I have a rocket this rocket is two kilograms, little model rocket, and it's being launched from the surface of the Earth. There's an FG that's going to pull down like it would always. 
I'll go ahead and figure out that that's going to be mass times gravity and in this case it's going to be 2, I'm going to save myself a little time and not write out the units. Fg is going to be equal to negative 19.6 newtons. I'm going to say that there's a thrust and so your book uses the full word thrust for one of these forces and we're going to talk about how it accelerates relative to the amount of thrust. In part A of this problem I'm going to say that uh, perhaps on the back of the box for this rocket it says that it's able to achieve a thrust of 150 newtons. So let's go ahead and put in 150 newtons of thrust and I want to see what the acceleration would be. Again this is a pretty straightforward F net problem. I'm going to say that F net is going to be equal to the F thrust. I'll just leave it as the TH there plus FG. So F net is going to be equal to 150 newtons minus 19.6 newtons or the F net is equal to 130.4 newtons. I could solve for the acceleration now by using a, my other equation, Newton's second law. F net is going to be equal to mass times acceleration so 130.4 newtons is going to be equal to the 2 kilograms times the acceleration. Acceleration is going to be equal to, that must be 65.2 newtons. In part B of this problem, I'm going to say that somebody was observing this rocket and they noticed that it had an acceleration of negative 14 meters per second squared. And now I want to figure out what would the thrust be in order to have an acceleration of negative 14 meters per second squared. Well, like usual, I'm given the acceleration, so that means I go straight to Newton's second law, mass times acceleration. F net must be equal to the 2 kilogram mass of the rocket multiplied by negative 14 meters per second squared. F net is equal to negative 28 newtons. From there I'm going to go to my next equation, the sum of forces, which says that F net is going to be equal to the thrust plus Fg, and I have negative 28 newtons is equal to the thrust minus 19.6 newtons. I'll do the arithmetic and I'll solve that the thrust is equal to negative 8.4 newtons. I'm going to go ahead and trust in my arithmetic here. This is the correct answer. But what I can do is I can go up here and I can identify that I've drawn my vector in the wrong direction. It's a negative 8.4. The actual thrust vector would have to be a downward pointing vector with a magnitude of 8.4 newtons. So to explain this, maybe we have to say that the rocket went up in the air and then it flipped over and for a little bit of time it was giving some small amount of thrust downward that was allowing it to actually achieve an acceleration that was larger in magnitude than that of gravity. So normally something in free fall can only travel down with an acceleration of negative 9.8. If you're going to use a number that's bigger than negative 9.8, bigger in the negative direction, then it must have additional force pushing it down. That's all I have planned for the FNET review. If you'd like, look at some of the other videos that are going to show some of the conceptual ideas, and then there's also an honors problem available.